everyone, welcome to my Lightroom series where I'll be covering how I've refined my workflow over the last six years. I'll cover import to export and everything in between. Let's get started. Alright, today we're going to cover the develop module. This will take us through the basic settings all the way down through calibration. We're going to cover all the, uh, the different panels here that we've got in the develop module. So let's hop over into Lightroom and get started. Alright, now we're over into Lightroom and we're going to go through the develop module. So you can see up here you've got your, your develop module. And you're going to jump over to there by just clicking on it or you can hit D for develop and that will jump you right over there. If you get back to the library you can come up here or hit E or G and that will pull up the grid view in the library module. Okay so we're going to back over to develop and let's just start over here on the left we've got our navigator so this is your uh, your image and that will show you where you're zoomed into and you can just click this little box and move that around as you need to. And then you have your presets. So this, these top seven are Lightroom standard presets, and then you have user created presets or ones you've uh, renamed, things like that. Next up is snapshots. So snapshots you can create a like a saved edit basically. So if you maybe do a different crop for this, a 16 by 9, you can uh, hit plus. Call it 16 by 9 and save that as a preset. Maybe you do a 1 by 1 crop for Instagram or a 4 by 5 for Instagram. You can save a, a snapshot of that. So the next is the history. So this will show you all the uh, editing that you've done to this image. The history will show you all of the editing that you've done to the image step by step. And you can jump back to um, a step to go back to that edit and then restart editing from there. So comes in handy sometimes. Next up is the collection. So this carries over from the library module. You can see you have all your collections here. So a quick tip for this here is if you right click on this panel here, you can get all of these um, or you can uncheck them if you don't want them or you can do solo mode or uncheck solo mode. So if solo mode is unchecked, when you expand one of these, it doesn't close the other one. So if I have it in solo mode, it will collapse the other mod, uh, other panels that are open. So you see that it collapses the previous one. I prefer to keep it in solo mode just because I have a big collection and a lot of times these are expanded out more so I don't like zooming or scrolling a whole lot. So I keep it in solo mode. Okay, so down below here we've got the film strip as we did in the library module as well as our toolbar here for choosing colors, uh, flagging, and rating images. And you can zoom in here as well as show your grid. And then over here on the right hand side we've got our develop tools. So let's just go from the top here. So histogram, this is very helpful to edit your images to match your histogram. The majority of the time, histogram will, will give you a, a proper exposure. And another tip here is you can actually edit right here in the histogram all of your basic stuff, which is your exposure and then these four highlight shadows, whites and blacks. So to show you how to do that, you just move your mouse up here and you can bring your exposure up. Maybe bring your shadows up a little bit, your highlights down or up, whatever your taste is and you can see that is changing it down here below. Then you can come down here to your basic and play with your other sliders. You can move your mouse across them. You can punch in a number here. If you double click, you can put in 10 or negative 10 or negative number or whatever there. You can also, if you hover over this, you can hit your up key, your up arrow and your down arrow and it will go up and down there. So kind of a quick little tip. You can also put in, I think it's your brackets. I want to say your brackets will go up and down. Oh, that's your rating. Um, let's see here. If you 
select on that, plus and minus, there you go. You select the, if it's highlighted here, you see it's white, a little bit highlighted. Use your plus and minus will decrease and increase the shadows. So that yeah, kind, of, kind of comes in handy. I prefer to use the mouse over this and just arrow up and down or just crank my sliders. So just a couple ways to, to kind of play with those sliders a little bit. Next is the tone curve. So uh, like I said in my import video, if you haven't watched that, go watch that now. Um, I like a medium contrast uh, most of the time, probably about 80 to 90% of the time I use medium contrast. It just adds a little bit of extra punch and contrast there. These three are default uh, Lightroom um, tone curves. Then you can also create some that you want. So I've got a bunch of different uh, tone curve set up for different images or photos and things that I've done. Okay, the next after tone curve is your HSL and color slider or color uh, tab here. So what you've got is just your colors and you can come through here and you can do one by one. Or if you hit HSL, you've got hue, saturation, luminance, or hit all and that you can monkey around with these this way or if you come back over to color and hit all, you get all of them here. So. That just plays around with uh, hue, saturation, and luminance for the different color. Next up is your split toning. You can add crazy split toning colors and stuff like that. If you want to, if that's your jam, that's your jam. That's how you adjust that. Another quick tip while I'm doing it, if you double click on any one of these properties, it will reset it back to zero. All right, next up is the detail. So this is where you're gonna add sharpening and noise reduction. Lens correction is up next, and profile, I always set it up to auto, that way the it's automatically done. Again, I created that on my import preset so that it, I don't even have to worry about it. Unless I'm shooting a manual lens that doesn't have uh, digital contacts, um, then I need to go and find that lens and, and put that in there. Uh, I had to do that quite a bit with my Rokinon lenses. So the next up is your transform. So this comes in handy for mostly for architectural or just getting your horizons level. You can try and play around with these and see if it will get it right, but most of the time I use the um, the little custom draw lines. You can draw a couple guidelines to get your image straight and uh, level. You can also play around with these options down here. And don't forget to hit constrain crop, otherwise you'll get white the white corners when you go too far or go very far on this at all. Okay, so that's the transform. The next up is your, whoops, is your effects tab. So this is post crop vignetting. So this will uh, apply after you've cropped an image. So let's say, uh, let's say we crop this in a one to one. Okay, so if you come down to your effects here and you add a vignette, you notice it's doing it to the cropped image and not to the uh, original image that came out of camera. Next is the calibration and I usually crank these up to a plus about uh, plus 10 for each of these. Just adds a little bit more punch of color. It's a good way to add some overall saturation without really overdoing it. I usually don't monkey around with the saturation here. Vibrance I will boost that up a little bit usually. So that's the, uh, the develop module tools there. One thing I didn't cover, and I'm gonna cover this in a uh, more in-depth video. In fact, it should be the next video, so don't forget to subscribe for that, which is the adjustment tools here. So this is your crop, your clone, or uh, uh, I don't know what they're called, the clone spot removal, red eye adjustment uh, gradient, gradient brush, circular brush, and your adjustment brush. So I'll cover those in the next video. So that's your Lightroom Develop Module walkthrough. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope you guys learned something from this. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so I don't have to remind you guys when the next video comes out. All right guys, till next time, bye.